cousin of Hereford, as thy cause is right, so be thy fortune in this royal fight. Farewell, my blood, which if today thou shed, lament we may, but not revenge thee dead. Oh, let no noble eye profane a tear for me if I be gored with Mowbray spear. As confident as, as the falcon's flight against the bird do I with Mowbray fight. My loving lord, I take my leave of you. Of you, my noble cousin, Lord O'Merle. Not sick, although I have to do with death, but lusty, young, and cheerily drawing breath. Lo, as at English feasts, so I regret the daintiest last to make the end most sweet. O thou, the earthly author of my blood, whose youthful spirit in me regenerate doth with a twofold vigor lift me up to reach at victory above my head. Add proof unto mine armor with thy prayers, and with thy blessing steal my lance's point that it may enter Mowbray's waxen coat, and furbish new the name of John Agont, even in the lusty behavior of his son. God, in thy good cause, make thee prosperous. Be swift like lightning in the execution, and let thy blows doubly redouble fall like amazing thunder on the cask of thy adverse pernicious enemy. Rouse up thy youthful blood, be valiant, and live. Mine innocence and Saint George to thrive. However, God or fortune cast my lot, there lives or dies, true to King Richard's throne, a loyal, just, and upright gentleman. Never did captive with a freer heart cast off his chains of bondage and embrace his golden uncontrolled enfranchisement more than my dancing soul doth celebrate this feast of battle with mine adversary. Most mighty liege, my companion peers, take from my mouth the wish of happy years. As gentle and as jocund as to jest go I to fight. Truth hath a quiet breast. Farewell, my lord. Securely I espy virtue with valor, couched in thine eye. Order the trial, Marshal, and begin. Harry of Hereford, Lancaster, and Derby, receive thy lance, and God defend the right. Strong as a tower in hope, I cry, Amen. Harry of Hereford. Lancaster and Derby stands here for God, his sovereign and himself, on pain to be found false and recreant, to prove Thomas Mowbray, Duke of Norfolk, a traitor to his God, his king and him, and dares him to set forward to the fight. Think the eagle-winged pride of sky-aspiring and ambitious thoughts with rival-hating envy set on you to wake our peace which in our country's cradle draws the sweet infant breath of gentle sleep, which so roused up with boisterous, untuned drums, with harsh, resounding trumpets, dreadful bray, and grating shock of wrathful iron arms, might from our quiet confines fright fair peace, and make us wade even in our kindred's blood. Therefore, we banish you our territories. You, Cousin Hereford, upon pain of light, till twice five summers have enriched our field, shall not regret our fair dominions, but tread the stranger paths of banishment. Your will be done. This must my comfort be. That sun that warms you here shall shine on me, and those his golden beams to you here lent shall point on me and gild my banishment. Norfolk. For thee remains a heavier doom, which I, with some unwillingness, pronounce. Mowbray, so far as to mine enemy, by this time had the king permitted us, one of our souls had wandered in the air, banished this frail sepulcher of our flesh, as now our flesh is banished from this land. Confess thy treasons ere thou fly the realm. Since thou hast far to go, bear not along the clogging burden of a guilty soul. No, Bolingbroke, if ever I were traitor, my name be blotted from the book of life, and I from heaven banished as from hence. But what thou art, God, thou and I do know. 
And all too soon, I fear, the king shall rule. Farewell, my liege. Now no way can I stray, save back to England. All the world's my way. Uncle. Even in the glasses of thine eyes, I see thy grieved heart. Thy sad aspect hath from the number of his banished years plucked four away. Six frozen winters spent return with welcome home from banishment. How long a time lies in one little word? Four lagging winters and four wanton springs end in a word. Such is the breath of kings. I thank my liege that in regard of me, he shortens four years of my son's exile. But little vantage shall I reap thereby. For ere the six years that he hath to spend can change their moons and bring their times about, my oil-dried lamp and time-be-wasted light shall be extinct with age and endless night. My inch of taper will be burnt and done, and blindfold death not let me see my son. My uncle. Thou hast many years to live. But not a minute, King, that thou canst give. Shorten my days thou canst with sullen sorrow, and pluck nights from me, but not lend a morrow. Thou canst help time to furrow me with age, but stop no wrinkle in his pilgrimage. Thy word is current with him for my death, but dead, thy kingdom cannot buy my breath. My son is banished upon good advice, where to thy tongue a party verdicts gave. Why is our justice seems thou then to lower? Things sweet to taste prove in digestion sour. You urged me as a judge, but I had rather you would have bid me argue like a father. A partial slander sought I to avoid, and in the sentence my own life destroyed. Alas, I looked when some of you should say I was too strict to make mine own away. But you gave leave to my unwilling tongue against my will to do myself this wrong. Cousin, farewell. And uncle bid him so. Six years we banish him, and he shall go. <laughs> Farewell. What presence must not know from where you do remain, but paper show. My lord, no leave take I.